Yo, yo, yo guys, what's up? Today we have a long day, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning and I know I have to do a question and answer. So yesterday I posted this photo on Instagram and we got a few hundred comments uh, of questions that you want me to answer. So today I'm taking you on my day through New York City and we're gonna answer those questions. Let's go. places in the city we are standing in the spot where David Blaine did his vertigo special where he stood on top of the pillar and then jumped off um, I was actually here when I was 13 years old I witnessed it and uh, it really inspired me so let's answer some questions okay how do you deal with being nervous so nerves are a big part of any performance uh, not just in magic but in any if you go out on stage or before you're about to perform we do get nervous this is a natural thing the best way to deal with it is just to power through it I know it can be frustrating at times where you're like oh I don't know if I could do this but you can do it the best thing that you can do is perform more and more and the more you perform the less you're gonna get nervous down the road do you have any other talents or hobbies um when I was little, I used to play the piano from the age of 7 to maybe like 14 and I just stopped. I used to draw and paint a lot. Now my main hobby outside of magic is playing squash. Uh, it's the only thing that I really could play. I can't play any other sports, but I do love squash. So if anybody plays squash out there, let me know and uh, we'll get a game going. What is your go-to routine? So. I have a few go-to routines that I do. With cards, if it's with a deck of cards, my go-to routine would be something that I taught in a previous video here on the channel. So link is down below, go-to routine. You could check that out. It's a very basic routine. Basically, you want to get their attention. You don't want to do a complicated routine. You want to do something very simple, easy to understand, and this effect, I think, is perfect. As far as a go-to routine when it comes to non-card magic related, the mismade bill is something that I talked about in my previous video, and it's one of the best close-up tricks that you can do I think there's nothing better and when you're gonna do a bill switch I don't think it's in my opinion good to do a dollar bill to a hundred dollar bill because the audience what are they gonna say oh how did you switch the bill because they know you can't just magically turn one to a hundred how did you switch it this is their main question so I believe when you're gonna do a bill switch it's better to take a one dollar bill do it into a mismade bill then give it out to them. That is the best. Okay, we're gonna head now to the exact spot where the knock concept was created. It's a restaurant, not too far from here, and uh, I'll tell you why that's important. Okay guys, we are in the exact spot where I came up with the knock concept, right at here, the Capitol Grill uh, near Grand Central in New York. So I had a friend, his name was Michael Knockhamson, and he worked on Wall Street, and uh, probably once a month he would invite me to the Capitol Grill, this restaurant, this exact spot, to have me perform magic for him and his friends here at the restaurant. He would always put his reservation under knock, N-O-C, and when I would come into the restaurant, I would ask, hey, reservation for knock, N-O-C, and I thought that was such a cool word, concept, branding, uh, and at that time I was thinking for a name for this deck of cards that I wanted to do. Now I got the idea for the knock deck from old Michael Murray effect. It was called Beyond ESP, I believe, and it was an ESP deck, circle, plus sign, wavy line, star, etc. And they would look just like knocks before knocks existed, and uh, but they were ESP cards. So I took one card, I put it on top of a bicycle deck, and I go, wow, wouldn't this be a cool deck of cards? Years later, when I started producing decks, I decided, hey, nobody did this concept, let me give it a try. And it was in this very spot where I decided, hmm, I need a name for it. And when I walked in and I said, hey, reservation under knock, then it clicked. And from then on, knocks were called knocks. Thank you to Michael Knockhamson for that. All right. Will knock have a full marked feature including the value of the cards. So the answer to this question is yes. We are working on a system now that is both for suit and value. Now the signature series before were marked for both suit and value, but I didn't like 100%. I wasn't very happy with the fully marked system for that. So we're redesigning it and uh, trying to figure out the best and easiest way to mark 
this design of a simple backed card for both suit and value of the cards. What inspired you to start Magic? Uh, very good question. I get that asked all the time. And uh, to answer it, I want to take you on this little journey just a few blocks that way to Tannin's Magic, and I'll answer that right there. So when I was about five years old, a clown came to my birthday party and he put some sponge balls in my hand and ever since then I was hooked. So I wanted to learn more and uh, I found a magic shop in Queens, New York called August Moon when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And the guy behind the counter, his name was Jonathan Price. We became friends and he taught me most of what I learned in the very, very beginning. So then I stumbled upon Tannen's Magic Shop in New York City, which is right over here. Uh, well, not here, it is here now, but before it used to be a few blocks down that way. And I walked in when I was about 12, 13 years old, and the guy behind the counter changed the way that I view magic, and everything that I do now is basically owed to him. So we're gonna go upstairs now, see if he's in, and see what he has to say. So we just talked about my favorite opener a little earlier and uh, one of the first things I ever saw at Tannins and Magic Do was the mismade bill trick uh, with a dollar bill and he'll show you that right now. Yeah, so it looks a little something like this. Borrow a dollar bill from somebody, this is the real thing my friends, look at that, one dollar bill, right? So I'm gonna take it like this, I'm gonna fold it up. You ask somebody what's changed for a dollar and they always say four quarters. And lo and behold, the one dollar bill literally changes into four quarters. Right, not coins, that's the big gag, right? So it's literally in four quarters of a bill, both sides, not just one, I don't do that to you. And then of course I take it back and always bring it back because uh, you don't want them keeping that bill, that bill's a little too expensive. So when you're blowing it like this, you bring it right back, you give them back their dollar, they shit themselves. Thank you very much. All right guys, so Magic Ballet is here um, and he is the reason why I do magic, I guess, because every Saturday I'd walk in with my mom and she'd buy me the latest trick. Yeah. Um, and then I'd go home and I'd learn it, I'd come back. And do you remember that you would take me out to bars <laughs> in New York and like sneak me in? And uh, you weren't even old enough to drink. You weren't old enough to be in a bar, but he wanted to look, watch the magic so bad. So yeah, man, we'd sneak him right in. So one of the greatest memories I had when I was little it was you sneaking me into a bar in New York. And literally, this is what you said. I don't know if you remember this. You go, all right, let's pick up some chicks. I go, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Typical. So, so I said to myself, uh, all right, in, in my head, I was like, that's a little weird. And then you're like, no, 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 let's go. Point out to anybody in the bar, right? So I remember pointing out to this one girl. She was gorgeous, and I still remember her to this day. So if I see her on the street, well, she's probably like like 20 years older right now, so I probably won't recognize her. But I will. I will. <laughs> you, without any hesitation, walked up to her and showed her a few things, and boom, the whole crowd was yours. Um, Including so. the girly. <laughs> and then you picked her up. I did. She wasn't that heavy because I didn't have a bad back too. So. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, if you were to say, uh, I'll, I'll give you this question, three tips to become a successful magician, what would you say? Uh, be humble, know your shit, and be funny, you know? Have a great sense of humor and, and a good personality. You yeah, know? yeah I, I, I definitely agree. I would say my, my top three would be... Good looks too. <laughs> that always helps, but how did you get through it? Damn. Don't let that. Damn you. <laughs> I would say the top three for me would be to really work hard at what you want to achieve. You, you, but not necessarily work hard before you perform. You want to work hard at performing. So go out and perform as much as you can to whomever you can. And that is something you do. You go out and perform everywhere. And that's what inspired me. Yeah. Number two, have meaning behind your magic. So not just show them something just to show off, right? And it's something that you just said. Yeah. Uh, have a meaning behind them so they could appreciate it and it's not just like me showing off. Yeah. And number three, most importantly, be yourself. I think that's super important. You don't want to try to be like any, anybody else because that's going to come off as, wait, who are you? Do you perform any magic other than cards, rings, rope, chop cup, coins, cups and balls? Funny you should ask. One more thing, um, where is the toilet? Oh yeah, man, here you go. It's uh, down the hall to the right, all right? Oh, nice, thank you. You'll smell it. 
Found it. So somebody asked me if I like Chinese food, which got me really, really hungry. So we're gonna go get Chinese food now and best dumpling place in the city. So someone asked, what TV shows do you watch? Um, my favorite TV shows are Lost, Breaking Bad, Prison Break, um, Mad Men is a great one. And recently I got into a show called Billions and it's just back for another season. That's a good show. So full. Would you ever consider becoming a TV magician and what advice would you give to a young magician who aspires to be the next Dynamo? Um, for me, I do not want to be a TV magician. I do not want to be on TV or anything like that. But I've been asked to do like America's Got Talent and Fool Us and all of that. And I declined each of them because I just think that performing in person is more personable and I enjoy that better. So for me, no TV. But for you, if you want to be the next Dynamo, honestly, you just got to work hard and keep your motivation going so you could have momentum to reach your goals. That's really the advice that I have for anything. So if you want to be anything in this life. I think you have to persist and keep that motivation going, so never give up and you'll reach your goal someday. Maybe you'll be the next Dynamo. How do you respond when people say it's a camera trick? We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay, so I got a quick meeting and uh, we'll be back. So, just finished my meeting and let's get back to a few more questions. How do you start a good magic YouTube channel? So, the way that you start a good YouTube channel, um, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this because I just really started my YouTube and I don't know how good it is just yet, but I think if you look at the people that you do admire on YouTube and the people that make good content, the content is always sincere. It's something that the viewers could learn from and they could take away something in their own lives. So you just gotta ask yourself, what do I like to watch and what is my target audience and what would they like to watch? You know, make a plan on paper and go from there. How do you combine your magic and travel and what advice could you give me to do the same? The way that I did it, I combined my magic and my travel passions. Uh, back in 2013, I was living in New York almost all my life and uh, I decided I wanted to travel. So I set up a lecture tour and uh, I actually got rid of my apartment here in New York. I sold my cars and I threw out everything that I had and I took a few decks of cards, threw them in a suitcase and went on tour. It started with a European city tour and it turned into over 120 cities all around the world uh, that I traveled in and performed and lectured. So my advice to you is maybe do the same. Uh, maybe not throw out everything here you have, uh, but you set it up in advance where if you want to go perform, maybe you could find colleges or theaters or things like that where you could uh, do performances, maybe you could lecture, and structure it in such a way so that you combine everything that you love together and then it doesn't feel like work. What do you think magic on YouTube needs to continue to grow, evolve, bring in a positive impact to the community? Uh, great question. This is something that I think about a lot and I try to implement into my channel because what I try to do here on my channel is give a meaningful information, something that you'll take away and learn uh, as opposed to just doing videos for the sake of doing videos. And the reason I started my YouTube channel is because I saw so many people just wanting to do a tutorial on this or exposing that and I wanted to do it in such a way where you could actually learn and become a better performer through this. I want to make a statement now uh, and I'll try to hold myself to it. Once I hit, whenever that happens, once I hit 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube, I will start making daily videos and daily posts every single day uh, for as long as I can keep it up. So if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and if you like this video, hit that like button uh, and we will see you in the next video.